Oops. There we go. Alrighty. So, this is Percy. Oh, isn't he such a cutie? Alright, so he's like, hey, why are you all up on me? Anyways, Percy, look here so they can see you. Oh, what a cutie. So, Percy is going to get a bath and just a little light trim. The problem is, he's matted. So, I'm going to have to... Oh, The thing is, this happens around this time every year. So this is not a bash on the owners or anything like that. If you study the skin, the, the canine skin and coat, how the hairs grow, they grow in bundles. They call it complex follicles because they're not simple. They're complex, they're deep. I'm kidding. Uh, it's because they grow multiple hairs, bundles of hair out of one follicle. And every season, Pretty much because it's change of sunlight every season their ha their hair goes through a change right just like we change our, our clothes right every season to match the weather and what's going on they change their coat with each season right to stay fresh but because they can't just remove their clothes and buy new clothes like we do they blow out their coat right and so this is all let me see if I can give a close up here so this is all that dead hair, that old dead hair. And the thing is, it, it clumps together like this because it's like Velcro. And I've noticed myself even, um, sometimes when I'm, you know, getting a lot of that dead hair out and it falls on the floor, it'll even stick to the bottom of my shoes. It'll like bundle up and form a big, and, and even on carpet, you'll see like, I don't know, the, their hairs just kind of attract each other and they bundle up like tumbleweed. And then these turn into these big matted balls on this on the dog's skin. Now these mats are already pulling on their skin, and their skin is more sensitive than ours. That's why we have to be so gentle. We have to use and we have to incorporate a bunch of different tools in order to comb these mats out safely, where it won't cause them too much pain. But we won't, we're not going to damage their skin either, you know. And it, it can be done safely and pretty simply, pretty easy, um, as long as you know what, what to do. So first, what I like to do is I started with the comb, right? And I go in because the comb is going to catch all the mats. So there it is right there, right? So once you catch the mats, now the idea is to break it up as much as possible so you can pull it out easily. So I could try to break it up with this, but it's a little bit too thick. It's a little bit too, um, uh, too much of a solid mass for it to really break up with the slicker brush. And that's why I'm gonna use uh, this cutting blade of my uh, blenders here, especially because it has a blunt edge here instead of the pointy edge, so it's less of a ch chance of poking their skin. So I like to use this blunt edge, but I'm using this cutting blade here to go through with the lay of the hair like that and just cut it out so and we're not really cutting out the cutting it out um, we're just splitting it up really so we're splitting up these big masses of dead hair pretty much it's just dead dull hair and it's rough the texture you can feel it's rough it kind of has like a little balls of wool, cotton balls, like stuck in there. So we're just breaking it up. Now that I have it broken up a bit, right? And that, you could tell that didn't hurt him at all because I'm just going through with the cutting blade and just cutting it. He barely even notices it. And it's the same idea with this. Now I can go through with this. So, and it's not gonna pull as much because it's already split up. And you like, I wanna hold the base of the skin so it doesn't pull too much. There we go. Good boy. With your fingers now, if you wanted to. See that? But now, this slicker brush will work because it's all broken up. So now that it's all broken up, now I can just brush it right out. See that? And this, okay, disclaimer every time I do this, this is not to show professional dog groomers how to do this because at a grooming shop you know 
they just don't have the time because each dog has to be done in a certain amount of time. They have other dogs waiting in line and you don't want to get your clients upset. You don't want your customers to get upset because their dog's been sitting there for hours and not being done, you know, things like that. So that's not, not, it's not good for business because of my business model. I'm doing house call. I get to take my time. This is my project today. I have one other dog, you know, but anyways, you know, so this is just more to show uh, dog owners, pet owners, that if you know your dog is about to go to the groomers and they usually shave your dog and you don't like that, you know, when they shave your dog down to the skin and just remove the, all the matted hair, if you don't like that, then this is what you can do. It'll take about, you know, maybe a couple of hours especially if you're not experienced, but you know, you spend that time and then you take and they can keep it the length, you know, that you want, because in order to keep any kind of length, in order to avoid shaving your dog, they have to be able to get a comb through the hip, through the coat, because if this comb doesn't go through, there's no way the comb attachment, the comb guards on the clipper blades, which will help leave length. There's no way that's going to go through. For example, let me show you. So let's just say that we're trying to leave about five eighths of an inch. And that's not even that long. If, if the comb can't go through, then this comb guard won't go through either. See that? It's going to catch. And so your, your groomer can't leave any length if your dog is not properly combed out thoroughly like this. Right? And, I, you know, especially this time of year, summer, winter, um, fall, even the spring. So, <laughs> I mean, all, all your, every dog is on a different life cycle as well with their hair. Every hair is on a different life cycle. So pretty much you could just, you could just pretty much expect your dog to be going through a coat change pretty much <laughs> every, every season. And I see, I see a lot of complaints. I see a lot of people and they say like, could you please groom my dog? And I, I can't, I can't take any new clients. I completely, oh my God, I'm so, anyways, um, so what I'm doing is I want to share and show people what it is I do to avoid shaving dogs so that you can do it as well. So I'm just going to go over here. So again, the reason why I'm not starting with the brush is because it's going to cause too much pain and discomfort because it's going to pull too much because it's a solid, I'm just going to go through and do like that. Just get it to go through and then slide it through. There we go. There we go. And that way, I mean, of course he doesn't like me messing with his ear. You're okay, buddy. But it, it's not hurting him. You can tell it's not really hurting him. It's just maybe he's like, what are you doing? Don't, don't mess with that. Because the, like I said, it's already pulling at his skin and their skin is already sensitive. Um, their skin is thinner than ours. So it's a lot more sensitive to pain and things like that than, than our skin is, which is why they're covered with hair to protect it all. So obviously it's not very comfortable for him, but if I just go through like that, then he doesn't mind it so much because it's not hurting him. And we've been through this so often. <laughs> Now he knows that, okay, this is a bit of an inconvenience, you know? I mean, I don't like brushing my teeth either or doing my, you know, grooming myself. I don't really like it, enjoy it. I'm not a particular, you know, I mean, it's, it's for our health, right? We have to brush our teeth, comb our hair, do all that, you know, wash ourselves to be, so that other people can tolerate us, right? <laughs> people that we live with, with, live and work with. Okay, so I'm gonna go through with this now. Now that it's broken up, there you go. Good boy, Percy. There we go. And if it, if you get stuck and it doesn't go through, rather than power through it, it's better to kind of give it a little bit of a tease, kind of in and out a little bit, just kind of tease it. And then as you break up the, the surface of that matted mass, then it just comes through. So rather than try to power through it, it's much better to just gentle taps, light taps. It's not about strength, you know? It's just more about patience 
and um, understanding, you know, what Matt is made out of and why it's, why it's happening. Once we understand that, then we can understand, okay, well, then I just have to go through and just comb out this dead hair, and then he'll be good for another few weeks, maybe a month or two, you know? There we go. There we go. See, just combing out all this dead hair. Good boy. And by doing this, his his hair, his ears are going to stay much cleaner now because this is what's holding on to dust, debris, moisture. Um, hey, what's up? Good morning, Kit Kat. Um, this, this is all, if you look at it closely, it's you can see it dirty, right? It's kind of discolored. So when you feel the ear now, it feels nice and silky, soft and smooth and silky. And that is a good indication that most of these hairs here are now live and healthy. The reason why I'm saying that is you can tell that this live hair, because it's sealed and has protected with oil, it's going to repel. It's going to push off dust, sand, dirt, um, moisture. So when once he's all combed out and you don't have to do a thing, just let him, you know, relax in the corner for a little bit. <laughs> and when he's dry, it'll literally all just fall off of him. Like he'll be, he'll be dry and look clean. <laughs> Like, even after he rolls in mud, you know, my dog Angel's a perfect example. She's a white dog, and she she fell into a lake <laughs> because it was frozen. She was walking on top of the ice and fell in, and she was black. The mud was black, you know, and so now I have this nasty, wet, black, you know, like mud, you know, black mud-covered <laughs> dog that's white. Um, but by the end of the, and I was thinking, what am I going to do? You know, like, I can't watch her here in the park, you know, and I got to get back in the car. But after the walk was done, we walked for another, like, maybe 20, 30 minutes. She was clean. She was white and dry and clean again. It just literally fell off of her. So that was like a real life example for me that once you have a well combed out dog, it's almost like a self-cleaning system. You know, once you, once it's, once you give it a good environment to function where it doesn't have all of this dead hair polluting that um, the flora here, right? The living ecosystem. As long as we give it a good, clean environment to work in, his coat will literally keep him clean and will push off all the dirt and dust and everything. So the next few weeks, he's going to look and smell and feel clean, even if he goes out and gets wet in the rain. So that's the importance, in my opinion, of brushing and combing and doing all of this. It's so much more important than washing your dog. I'm going to wash him after this, of course. But if I, would, if I didn't do all of this and I just washed him in it and I didn't comb it all out, it would not do much good. In fact, it'll probably do more harm than good. And then I'll have to probably end up shaving him down like I did last time. Because once the mats and all those tangles, once it gets wet, it, it tends to, you know, get tighter as it dries. So, um, you know, my, my motto, my, my mantra is brush more, bathe less. You want to brush much more than you bathe your dog. So, and, and I know it's like counterintuitive because we have to wash every day, right? If I don't take a shower every day, you know, my clients probably wouldn't like me much. Um, but for dogs, if you wash them too often, it will actually damage their skin and it'll wash away the natural oil. It'll, and dry skin tends to have problems. You'll have a smell in your dog the more you wash them, unless you're washing them pr pr like properly. If you're a professional groomer or a, a professional you know, breeder, you do show dogs, that's different. They're using so many different kinds of high quality products. You know, they know what they're doing, but for a pet owner to wash their dog more than once every four weeks, in my opinion, I think it's too much. You know, once a month is good, as long as you're brushing them thoroughly on a regular basis. How often? They say once a day at a minimum, but I know that's idealistic. We all, we're all busy, life gets in the way. So I, you know, ideally at least once a day, but... Um, realistically, because we're busy and everything, we're tired, 
I can get away with once a week with my dogs. All 6-1 ratio. So if you're brushing them six days out of a week, then go ahead and wash them weekly. That's right. That's fine. But if you're washing them once a week, then maybe wash them every six weeks, right? Or every five weeks, you know? So that's my ratio that I've come up with. And it's not like an exact science or anything. It's just you know, what I recommend for best results. Brush your dog six times to every one bath, thoroughly, head to toe, where you're combing all of this stuff out that's hiding right there at the skin under, under the coat, you know? So anyways, hopefully that was informative. Hopefully that makes sense and that helps. If anybody is, you know, upset with their groomer or having a bad experience, can't find a good groomer, you can't, you know, you don't understand why groomers can't just follow directions and not shave your dog. This is why, this is why. So this is what you can do at home to prevent that kind of frustration when you take your dog to the groomer. Your groomer can give your dog pretty much whatever haircut you ask for as long as they have a good canvas to work with. But if you give them a canvas that's full of dirt and it's dirty and nasty and looks like somebody rubbed motor oil all over the canvas and you ask this artist to paint you a nice pretty picture on this dirty canvas that you gave them, you know, probably isn't gonna work out well. You wanna give your artist a clean canvas. Same thing with the dog. You wanna offer your groomer a clean dog. Maybe not clean, but a, a clean canvas, right? Where the coat is all worked out and, it's, and it feels nice and it's not matted. This is a kind of condition you wanna bring your dog to the groomer in so that your groomer doesn't have to spend an hour or two to comb your dog out. And then after spending an hour or two combing the dog out, because that's about how long it takes, now there's not a lot of time left to wash, dry, and do the haircut. You see what I'm saying? So especially because a, a lot of clients, a lot of customers, they feel uneasy when their dog is at the groomers for too long, right? They start to get uncomfortable. So it has to be a team effort. Don't expect your groomer to be a miracle worker and to be able to do everything within a few hours. It's not possible. We're not magicians or wizards. Up the air and explain this and hopefully I explained it well and it makes sense so that when you take your dog to the groomer, you will have a pleasant experience. You will be satisfied with the results and you can get the haircut that you really want with your dog because the groomer has a good canvas to work with, right? See you guys.